Hello, my name is Alex Lavrov, and in this video, we'll configure replication with IBM Change Data Capture from database to Azure Event Hub. We'll start with configuring command line utils like Kafka Console Consumer and Producer, and also Kafka Cat, in order to communicate with Azure Hub and see what data we are getting there. And then we'll continue to configuring IBM Change Data Capture and replicate some tables to there as well. Let's get started. Before we start deploying assets in Azure, let's get familiar with terminology. Event Hub is built on top of uh, Kafka, so it supports Kafka and PI, but the names are a bit different. So, as you can see, Kafka cluster on Azure called namespace, and topic is Event Hub. Partition is partition, and consumer group is consumer group. So, when CDC will start replicating, we'll replicate into Event Hub that are grouped in the same namespace, which is equivalent to Kafka cluster with several topics. So now let's go to Azure. Okay, so this is the dashboard of my uh, Azure account. Uh, it's a free trial, but it should be enough to create namespace and several event hubs. So let's go to event hubs and create a new namespace, which is basically Kafka cluster. Uh, let's call it uh, resource group. We'll choose Alex text and the namespace name. Let's call it CDC test one. Okay, uh, and the pricing tier we need to choose standard because only in standard and up uh, the Kafka interface will be enabled. Basic is not enough for that. So we'll choose standard, review and create, and then we'll create the namespace. So now the deployment is in progress and uh, we'll be back when it will be finished. So the deployment is complete. Uh, let's go to the resource. And now please see that Kafka surface enabled, meaning that Kafka API is available. Without it, we'll not be able to replicate. Let's go to Event Hubs and create a couple of them. We'll need two, one for the data, another one for commit stream. Commit stream is used for different tasks uh, like TCC, transaction consistent consumer, things like that. We'll not be using that, but we need to create it uh, anyway. So let's create the first uh, event hub. We'll call it uh, data topic. Data topic will uh, remain uh, on partition. Doesn't really matter for this demo. Let's create it. So the event hub to data topic is being created. And the second one we'll call it commit str or stream. Let's create it as well. So now we have. Uh, Two event hubs so basically two topics and uh, the first step that we'll do is uh, to configure uh, different uh, client utilities uh, to work with event hubs so we'll do it for kafka cat and uh, kafka console consumer and producer so first thing that we'll need to do is uh, let's go back to the namespace okay we see everything is working and now we'll need to obtain shared access policy. Shared access policy is basically the, uh, it's like a username and password. These are credentials that we'll be using uh, in order to communicate with uh, event hubs. Uh, there is shared access policy in each uh, event hub, but since we'll have the single replication replicating and using both of the topics, both of the event hubs, uh, we'll need to use one on the namespace level. There is a default one, root manage shared access key. Uh, we will use it. Probably in the production environments it's not a good idea, but uh, for the sake of this demo we'll use it. Let's uh, give permission and save it. It's being updated. And uh, what we'll need for this from this policy is uh, this connection string primary key. Let's copy to clipboard and put it in a notepad, so we'll use it in our configuration. So now let's go back to our server and uh, start configuring the utilities. So the first utility we'll configure is Kafka Cat. Kafka Cat is a non-GVM, it's not written in Java, uh, open source utility uh, that I like to use in my demos and PUCs uh, very much because it's very flexible and very friendly, and it's both consumer and producer. In my the previous videos, I uh, showed how to install and compile and configure it. So uh, first we'll configure it and uh, we'll try to list the event hubs, meaning topics, that we have in our namespace. So the command to list the topics with Kafka Cat will be Kafka Cat minus B for the broker, CDC test one, the name of the namespace, 
the domain servicebuswindows.net and the port 1993. This is how we communicate with it. And uh, minus capital L is to list the topics. So if we'll execute it right now, of course it will fail because we didn't configure any uh, SSL, no authentication, no nothing. So of course uh, the broker transport failure error. Uh, in order to use Kafka Cat, we'll need to create configuration file and use it when we execute the command. So the template for such a file looks like this. We have the metadata broker list. Here we'll put the namespace. Uh, security protocol mechanism and username are fixed. This uh, we'll just copy paste it. And as password, we'll use the key that we copied from the dashboard. So let's do it. This is the key that we got from uh, our uh, Azure and service. Let's copy paste it here and let's put the namespace here. Okay, so now we'll copy it to our server. Let's create a file. Uh, let's call it VA Kafka cat CFG. Copy paste it and let's keep it. Uh, now, when uh, we execute Kafka cat, we'll need either to, with every comment, specify this configuration file or we can use environment variable Kafka cat config in order uh, to specify it as a default location. So let's create environment variable Kafka cat config and point it CDC Kafka cat CFG. So now when we execute this command again, it will pick up this configuration and hopefully it should work. Let's do it. Okay. So as you can see, it worked. It read configuration from this file and it showed that we have one broker, CDC test one service bus windows.net and two topics, data topic and commit str. So at this point, the connectivity is set and we should be able to consume messages from these topics. Right now they are empty, uh, but once we'll start replicate, we'll consume uh, data from there. So the next step will configure default Kafka uh, command utilities like Kafka uh, console producer and Kafka console consumer to use uh, and configuration will be similar, but a bit different. It will be closer to the configuration we have for CDC. So let's configure these two tools. Okay, so let's start configuration from Kafka console producer. Uh, the command to produce uh, records into the topic uh, will look like this. Uh, Kafka console producer uh, minus minus bootstrap server and the name of the name specific domain and port. This is the broker. And uh, the topic is uh, data topic from here. So, of course, if you'll execute it as is, it will not be able to connect and nothing will work. As you can see, it goes into the loop of uh, retries. So let's cancel it. Uh, and uh, in order to use it, we'll need to create a similar uh, configuration file that looks uh, like this. Uh, let's go to Kafka template. Okay, so here we have uh, the bootstrap server. Uh, we'll put the namespace, security protocol mechanism and JS config, uh, which in the password section will put uh, the key that we got from Azure. So uh, let's do it. Let's copy paste uh, the key we got. Let's put it in uh, instead of password and copy the namespace here. Uh, let's copy paste the file and create a new file, bi producer properties. Let's copy paste it. Uh, and now uh, when we are using, let's clear the screen. And now that we are going to use the Kafka console producer, we'll add the option that will point us to this configuration file, minus minus producer config and home CDC producer properties. Okay, so now if we'll execute it, uh, we should be able to send messages to this uh, event app. Let's execute it. Okay, we got the prompt. So now let's uh, send a couple of messages. Test one, test two. Okay, and uh, that's it. Uh, in order to use Kafka console consumer, we'll use uh, the same file. It's a good idea to separate them in different files because maybe in the future we'll add uh, some options that are only 
ac uh, only accessible for producer or only for consumer. So even though the initial configuration is very similar, we'll create a different file. So just copy producer properties to consumer properties. Okay, and uh, now we'll, uh, let's try uh, to consume uh, uh, messages from this uh, topic. Uh, we'll use uh, Kafka console consumer with uh, the same bootstrap server and topic. Uh, we'll use minus minus consumer config. We'll use this file and uh, let's consume from beginning. Double N. So now it connects. Okay, so it took some time because the server is probably far away, not on the same server. But you can see we consumed the same uh, messages as uh, we put with Kafka console producer. Great. So uh, let's try the same with uh, Kafka Cat. So for Kafka Cat, let's go back in history. Instead of minus L, let's use minus T data topic and let's consume everything from beginning, which is a default, a default behavior of Kafka Cat. Let's do it. Okay, as you can see, we consume the same uh, messages. So now we have uh, both uh, utilities, both Kafka Cat and default uh, utilities from uh, Kafka working. Now we are ready to configure uh, IBM change data capture in order to replicate data to data topic and then we'll use uh, one of uh, these utilities to consume and see that we actually got the messages where we wanted them. To configure IBM change the capture instance to work with event hubs, we'll need to do four things. First is to create a JS configuration file, that is Java authentication and authorization service configuration file that will contain the key that we got from uh, our Azure portal. Second one, specify it in the Java properties when the instance is started, then modify Kafka producer properties file and Kafka consumer properties file with similar options that we had in uh, Kafka common utilities. So let's start with JS configuration file. The JS configuration file content should follow the following template. So we have Kafka client and then we have a very similar to the previous configurations uh, string. One of them is password that we'll need to put the endpoint uh, configuration that we got from the portal. So let's do it. Let's copy paste the same string we had earlier right here. Okay, now let's uh, copy it and go to configuration uh, directory of the instance. It will be in OPP IBM CDC instance. And there I created the new instance that we'll use for Event Hub's uh, uh, replication event hubs and inside the configuration directory. We will not use the overall, the general configuration directory because we don't want it to affect all instances that we are going to create, just this specific instance. So let's create this file, pijas.conf and copy paste the content here. Let's save it. Next, we'll specify the argument in the DMTS64 VM args file that will be used as argument file for the JVM. Let's do it. VI VM TS64 VM args. It's a new file. It doesn't exist by default. Let's copy paste. So this is the argument we'll use. Java security authentication login config and uh, then the full path to our JS conf file. Next we'll uh, configure two additional files. Kafka consumer properties and Kafka producer properties. To configure these files, we'll use the previous configuration we used for Kafka command line utilities. And uh, let's take a look. So uh, this is the previous template we used, the bootstrap servers, protocol and uh, mechanism. We will not use JS config line because we, are, we have it already specified in the JVM arguments. So uh, let's uh, put our namespace in place. Uh, copy first through lines. And now we'll modify the files Kafka producer properties. Let's paste it at the end. And Kafka consumer properties. Also, we'll go to the end. 
So uh, now after we modified everything, we are ready to start the instance. So let's start it. No app opt ibm cdc in dmts64 minus a event hubs. This is our new instance. And uh, now we are ready to create first subscription and see if it works with Azure Event Hubs. Let's create a subscription. We'll call it to Azure. Source test uh, DB, target event hubs. Let's map tables. We'll use the same table as we used before from auto insurance schema, vehicle types. And now we'll configure Kafka properties. Kafka properties will specify Zookeeper. We will not use schema registry because we are going to use user exit that will replicate in plain JSON but also will map everything to data topic because we don't want to use uh, the default topics that CDC will try to create. Data topic, this is the parameter of uh, the user exit. I don't want to refresh, we'll uh, just uh, replicate the changes. And uh, let's start the replication. Now we'll go to the server and uh, start to replicate some data. Here I have two windows opened. One window is uh, connected to the source database, where we perform uh, the changes to the database. And second window here is uh, where we listen to the event hub that we'll be replicating to. So first of all, let's connect to the event hub and uh, start consuming messages. We are consuming from the end because we don't want to see all the tests we did before. So let's uh, start Kafka cat. Okay. So now it's listening to the messages and uh, now we'll perform uh, insert into the table vehicle types, as you can see here, insert into auto insurance vehicle types, values type V20, convertible small. Let's perform the change. It auto committed and now we'll see the change coming from Azure Event Hub as you can see here. Let's perform another one, uh, type 21, huge, okay. And now as you can see, we got it from Event Hub. So now we see that CDC successfully replicated data to Event Hub, data topic, and we consume it using Kafka Cat. All configurations and templates for these configurations will be documented in GitHub repository and the link to this repository will appear in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.